So it's currently Tuesday the 4th of September, and that means we have just 18 days remaining until the September equinox. I will be producing an additional video this week explaining the equinox challenge and also showing you a very simple experiment you can perform on the equinox that will confirm the sun is moving in a straight line across the sky on that day. Before going any further, I would like to give a quick shout out to two excellent channels. The first one is Ruhif, and you may remember he was the winner of my search and rescue challenge a few months ago, producing a highly accurate flight plan within minutes of the contest going live. He has a very methodical approach, is a whiz with mathematics and geometry, and explains things in a very clear and concise manner. In this video, he uses a dumpy level from various locations in Sydney, making observations towards the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the tower. Another video I'm sure you will enjoy is the analysis of the J. Tolan Media One observation in San Jacinto, where Ruhif does a careful analysis of the observation and confirms that it does in fact match the globe. Well worth checking out his channel. And the second channel I recommend is John Michelson, whose work on astronomy is par excellence, particularly his last video, which shows live streaming from his telescope. And this is the Dumbbell Nebula, M27. And as you can see, he also manages to observe a satellite passing through the frame. In the pinned comment, he has a timestamp to various celestial objects. So you can click on each of those and it will go straight to the relevant portion of the video. Well worth checking out John's channel. And a big thank you and welcome to my new subscribers since the last Equinox in March. I've noticed very consistent growth with the subscriber numbers doubling every six months. It is almost up to 8,000, currently 7,938 subscribers with 2.1 million channel views. Now, during the March equinox in 2018, the subscriber number was 4,000. The previous September equinox, it was 2,000. And the previous March equinox, it was 1,000. So we are seeing fairly consistent doubling of the subscriber numbers every six months. So thank you very much for your support. So back to the equinox and for the experiment that I will detail in a future video, you only require two items that are inexpensive and easily obtained. The first is a hula hoop and the second is a straight stick. I'm showing broom handles here. It does not have to be a broom handle. It can be any straight stick. However, it must be longer than the radius of the hula hoop. And the experiment will demonstrate very clearly that the sun moves in a straight line across the sky on the day of the equinox. And furthermore, the elevation at local noon will match 90 minus your latitude. It's a very easy experiment to perform. I'll be providing further details in a future video. So for those people with Android devices, there's an app that I strongly recommend because it is great for visualizing the Equinox sun angles and also for demonstrating the geometry of an equatorial mount and why you can track objects in the sky using a single axis of rotation. This is my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the app we're talking about is this one, Sunrise Sunset. That's what it looks like. And the screen you want is the 3D view, which gives you a compass rose, a shadow stick, plus a circle representing the motion of the sun as it would appear from your location on any given day. Now my current location is Broome, Australia, and it is the third of September. Now you can see because Broome has a latitude of 18 degrees south, the angle from vertical is 18 degrees of the path of the sun. Now if we were to move the date forward to the equinox, you can see that that position of the path of the sun is changing and now on the equinox 
that circle representing the motion of the sun aligns perfectly with due east and due west. And this is why we see the sunrise east and the sunset west on the equinox. Now the bottom part of the app, you can slide through the day and you will see the sun moving as it would on that day and the shadow stick is indicating what a real shadow would look like. And this also gives us a very clear indication of why the equatorial mount can track the sun using a single axis of rotation. Because the sun is going around a circle directly around the viewer's location. And we can choose any location to view the sun's path on any day of the year from any location on Earth. So now we have the equinox as it would appear at the equator. And this is where we have the sun going from east directly overhead at local noon. So we have no shadow and then setting directly west. That is what we see on the equator on the equinox. We can change to the solstice. And there we see the path of the sun as it would appear from the equator during the solstice in December. Again, you can see very clearly why the single axis of rotation on the equatorial mount allows us to track the sun. So I've now set the app to 70 degrees south latitude. So we're in the Antarctic Circle and in December, the sun is never actually going to set. You can see that path of the sun is always above the horizon. And you can still see why the equatorial mount can track using a single axis of rotation. Now, if we move to June, we now have a situation where the sun never goes above the horizon. And if we go through 24 hours of the sun's motion, it is never going above the horizon. So this app allows you to view the apparent path of the sun from any location on Earth on any date. And the visualization helps you understand why the equatorial mount can track the sun using a single axis of rotation. And I've now set the date of the equinox again, and even at 70 degrees south latitude, you can see the geometry of the sun's path intersects directly with due east and due west. And that is why, again, at sunrise, the sun is directly east, and at sunset, it is directly west. Also, from any viewing location on Earth on the day of the equinox, because that circle is now directly around you, you're actually located at the center of the circle of the sun's path, it is moving in an apparent straight line. So if you are looking at the sun from sunrise to sunset, it is moving in a straight line across the sky. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a future video. So the other aspect of the equinox sun angles is where the sun is at local noon. And you can see the sun is directly north, casting a shadow directly south. And as we have mentioned in previous videos, the elevation of the sun on the equinox at local noon will be 90 minus your latitude. We have 70 south latitude, 90 minus 70 is 20 degrees, and the elevation of the sun from horizontal is 20 degrees. And here is a way you can easily see why the sun's path will appear to be a straight line on the day of the equinox. If we turn the app around so that we are in line with the angle of the sun, which will match the latitude, you can see that as 
the sun moves across the sky, it's moving in a straight line. And from the viewer's location looking upwards, that is also what he sees. The sun moving in a straight line across the sky from any location on Earth on the equinox. And again, these are real world observations that anyone can make. The app simply helps you visualize the geometry. Here is another example. On the day of the equinox, the sun moving in a straight line across the sky. Now, clearly, again, that is impossible on any flat earth model. We've been asking the flat earthers to produce a model explaining the equinox sun angles for a long time. They have been unable to do so, and the globe continues to explain everything perfectly. It's called Sunrise Sunset. I highly recommend it. I'm going to be looking at it further in a future video. And the last part of this video is some star trails footage taken from Broome, Australia recently. This is looking south and the time lapse goes from sunset right through until sunrise. I was using a GoPro Session 5 and as you can see, the South Celestial Pole from Broome, Australia is quite low in the sky because our latitude here is just 18 degrees south. You can also see that the trails are moving in a clockwise fashion around the South Celestial Pole. Now I want you to observe that just after sunset we have these stars here. This is the Southern Cross and these are the pointers and you will notice they are to the right of the South Celestial Pole. In September, just after sunset, that is where they are located. If we came back in March, six months away, and filmed this same time lapse at the same time of the evening, these stars would be to the left of the South Celestial Pole, 180 degrees opposite from their position, as you see in this video. And you can confirm this yourself in any planetarium app such as Stellarium. This is Sky Safari 6 Pro. And there you can see on the 3rd of September 2018 at 7.15pm, the position of the Southern Cross and the pointers is to the right of the South Celestial Pole looking south from Broome, Australia. If we change to March, you can see that they have now swapped to the other side. They are now on the left hand side of the South Celestial Pole, 180 degrees opposite from their position in September. And that again fits perfectly with what we would expect on the heliocentric model. So this is the camera I used for the Star Trails video. It's a GoPro Session 5, just fitted to a standard tripod and powered by an external 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It will operate for more than 36 hours in time-lapse mode. It's controlled by the GoPro app on the iPad and in night lapse photo mode, I'm using five second exposures with one frame taken every 20 seconds in linear mode.